in the metaverse. And, wow. and for me, it's like doing the wrong, wrong, wrong thing, because right now companies are finding it so hard to do the onboarding for new employees for everything online and remotely, and, and they're not connected to the company, they're not connected to their teams, they don't feel obligated to the, to the companies afterwards. So they have huge problems with new employees that are working only remotely. And instead of trying to fix it with a human connection that they have, someone mentoring them, somebody really making them like active speed, understanding what's going on and, and, and being human as I see it, they're going to the other direction, make it less human. Mm -hmm. What would I do in my new in my workplace? I don't know anyone. I don't know anything about my position. I don't know who's against who, what are like the dynamics. I don't know anything. And I would put these like stupid things on. What, how would it help me? Why would I meet a half person? They don't have legs. And why would I meet them there? Right. Like maybe I'm too old. When I think about it, I'm saying like maybe I don't understand the young generation. But why would they do it? No. So I, I even think the younger generation who does put a, a VR on, like my son will wear his VR goggles. He wears them for an hour or two. He's not wearing them for eight or twelve hours a day. And I've tried him in the games. They're, they're wonderfully immersive. They are so much fun. They're a great form of gaming entertainment like i said a zoom call would be wonderful to do that way and, and so i'm all for these very very limited ways but we again i go back to what i first said we are a herd animal and we need face-to-face -face contact and we have friends both addy you have friends and i have friends and they have said to us the following um i, I love you and i'm there for you and we hear that phrase i am there for you and that phrase only has so much real meaning to us. We appreciate the sentiment of it, that they are there for us. But are they really physically there? And there's somewhere inside of our, our, our deep midbrain that realizes, no, they are not actually there in our house. So when our car doesn't start the next morning, they are not there. When we are sick in the middle of the night and we need someone to care for us, they are not physically there. We need to have people physically in our presence in order to feel physically safe and psychologically safe. And the workplace is one of the last places that we actually have where we can actually join in community. We have uh, the workplace. We may have a church or synagogue. We may have sports teams. Uh, but we have very few places now where we congregate in person. We absolutely need that. So you're right. If the technology giants had their way, Facebook would be online on our goggles. Uh, Amazon would have us delivering things to our doorstep. Uber would continue having us driving around in these little containers with one person that we don't really know being shuttled from place to place. We're constantly being put in these little teeny isolated cubes farther and farther away from other people. We are a herd animal. We need the interconnected relationships of multiple people where I know you and you know my friend John and John knows me. And when I'm not around, you and John talk about me. And not in a gossipy way, but in a yeah. caring and loving way. That is what we need to feel both physically safe and psychologically safe. And all of the research, all of the research says, if you want to live longer, happier, healthier, with better brain function, you need more physical, real world relationships. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, it, it, I always think about, you know, there is this like ranking of happy nations, you know, like each time they're doing these surveys and finding... And I, I'm always surprised to see that Israel is about the tenth in the number. And we did, we have hard lives. It's really expensive to live in Israel. We have lots of problems, as you might know. But for me, when I'm trying to to really understand why, I think it's because we have these like families, very close relationships. We're such Absolutely. a small country. We know each other. You know, yes. it's, it's it's so common in Israel just to talk to someone, and then he knows someone that I know, and it, it's a daily thing. We know each other and it happens all of the time. And the fact that you have this community, you have this feeling, it's not like that 
We're not living in houses, and it's not like we're uh, fire chatting all the time. <laughs> no, it's not fireside chat 24-7, no. But see, we know that we have someone half an hour from us, and that's it. He, my, my family is half an hour, all of my family, half an hour away from me. That's it. Because the country is so small, we're talking about physical connection, right? It's, it's near. So you feel that you're, you're physically and mentally, you have secure situation. Although we're not secure at all, at all in Israel, like it's not really happening. But the feeling is that you have someone like next to you. Right. And it's so important. It's, really it's so important. important. Yeah, it's so in, in, incredibly important. Uh, so yeah, cars are one of the worst. One of the, well, they're one of the best and worst things that's ever happened to humanity. They have expanded our uh, ca capitalism, and capitalism has a lot of faults, a lot of faults. Uh, but also, capitalism has been one of the greatest wealth creators, and also one of the most greatest elevators of people out of poverty. It's been wonderful things. But it's been horrible for the environment horrible for workers' rights, and it's been horrible for us psychologically because it's allowed us to separate from our, our, our family. When we choose where we live, we kind of choose the location first, like where do I want to live, what part, of, you know, where, where, by the bay, by the beach, in the mountains, we choose where we want to live. We choose that in, in consideration where, where we want to work. And then, then third, we think about community, and that is completely and totally backwards. The first thing we should be picking is community. <laughs> that should be the yeah. first decision point. Who are the people that I'm going to be in community with, in relationship with where I live? That should be the first choice, and then the economics, uh, and, and then maybe the, the lifestyle that's around you. But the people should be the first decision we're using, criteria we're using when picking where we live. Yeah, I totally agree. Although I know it's it's uncommon. So Israel is very uncommon at that stage because, like, the way that we see, see things is very different and our experience in life is very different and the, the way that we are as a nation is very different. So I cannot really compare. I feel like in many other places, people are really lonely. So I have a cousin who lives in London, for example, and she left London to live in the suburbs. And she told me that when you live in London, I never lived there, I just visited, that you feel so alone, you're so isolated, and socially, you feel like, yeah, I know people, but you need to uh, set a time, like a few months from now, we'll have time to just catch up. And it doesn't make sense to me what everybody's doing. Like they're working and not watching Netflix. They don't have time for each other. Right. Like, it doesn't make sense. Instead of like consuming another series, binging something on Netflix, wouldn't it make sense just to go out for a coffee if, mm -hmm. if, if you're both in London? It will take an hour in, in, the, in the tube. That's it, right? And people are, are like, it, it feels that they are so used to being in their own world, in their maybe in their hobbies. I'm just trying to imagine their daily lives. And, and I don't understand why people decide that. I, I, get, I understand that it's easy just to go back from, Look, from the work and just open that, Netflix. The reason is work is scheduling uh, meetings is work. And so in, in a city like New York, it's too dense.